Welcome one, welcome all to the start of a brand new season here from Aegis. We're taking a look at the Defenders League kicking things off. Week number one, ladies and gentlemen, and we are on to a very new and bright Summoner's Rift here. But of course, we also have you guys here with a new casting crew here to take you through the entire season. I myself am Slayer Cast and joined by the very high knowledge Jordan Bot here in Mr. Jordan, but you know, we talked about, I, I, I introed us with the whole new season we've got going here. And I remember you talked about it. You think it feels almost like a whole brand new game. Oh, yes. League of Legends 2 is out and I have goosebumps every time I talk about it. And these guys must be super hyped for week one. They want to show what they got. Yeah, and we have two pretty heavy hitters that are coming through for our group here. And we got 16 teams here in the ADL. We're going to be playing seven weeks of regular season action here. So you've got eight teams per group in two different groups here. I believe it is the Dark Star group and the Cosmic group. But we're going to take a look at the Dark Star one first here. And arguably two of the heavy hitters. I know our producer behind the scenes, PVS, put up some of his own opinionated power rankings. And, well, uh, Jordan Body had one of these teams going 7-0, that being Rubber Ducky Gaming, and the only loss that the other squad, Con Esports, is going to get was from Rubber Ducky Gaming in his power rankings. So basically, we're taking a look at two contenders for this entire league. Absolutely. And when I was looking at the uh, the ranks of Rubber Ducky Gaming, I was kind of scratching my head like, holy, they have a uh, quite a talented roster. They've got uh, master tier across the board last season, and this league being 100 LP cap, they're right where they need to be to be the favorites in the league. Yeah, they are slotted right in there, and Jordan Ball alluded to it. Master cap is where we're sitting at. Defenders League Diamond, 
you guys can put two and two together at home. I don't need to spell everything out for you here, but we should be getting into draft somewhat soon to be kicking off this best of three series. But Jordan, I want to pick your brain here about, you know, exactly what you think you're expecting to see here from both of these squads in the draft. I know Con Esports is on that blue side. So you being the analytical mind here on the desk, what are you looking for just in general, trying to pry at that B1 spot, that coveted spot in the draft? Just looking at some things that jump off the page, we know there's a, a couple known OP picks on the patch, those being uh, some of the Titanic junglers. So we're looking at like Trundle, Zin Zhao, Jarvan can be very impactful. Oriana is a good pairing with that. Um, the mid lane pool, the only Z tier champion that I've kind of uh, concluded to myself has been Corky. Um, so Corky could be a very strong B1, but we see priorities being very different across the world in terms of pro play. Uh, Nico being a really great uh, mid lane, even support flex option out there. Um, but one thing I noticed that's like pretty common uh, between the two teams is they both play a lot of the lane control, lane dominant AD carries. So I'm expecting to see probably double ranged bot lane. Um, and okay. the guys are gonna fist fight for the, for the prio and we'll see if they can translate that into some early game control. Yeah, that's a that's a, a lot of the big talk, right? Is bottom lane when it comes to, you know, do you want to go for those double range? Ash has, Ash has been a big prio sometimes on that B1 because you really could sync up a lot around the Ash if you want to run a support with a double range or if you want to try and flex and bring some more engage in the bottom lane. Ash can at least somewhat scale up well going that more AD carry like build style throughout the game. I know, obviously, uh, we're playing on 14.2. For everybody at home that is aware of the live patch, if that's not a little bit too obvious here, Karma has been the talk of the town, getting us some massive buffs in, in that regard, alongside champions like Ezreal, who are who are been put put together, paired together in that bottom lane a lot as well. It seems like kind of the scaling shielding champions, Jordan Bot, are also kind of big time players because I know Karma not only is just going in the support role, people have been throwing her mid along with Seraphines, which I know you and I had a, a discussion about <laughs> prior to getting on this broadcast. Yep. Dangerous champions because they don't reveal a whole lot in the draft. So these shielding champions seem to be um, they can they can hide your team comps identity while still playing for early game control, which is very valuable. Um, right. So I see a lot of uh, things like Varus, things like Ash, things like Jin um, in these guys match histories as well as Caitlyn. So I expect to be uh, kind of handshaking one, like back and forth some of these power picks. I think Ash is largely shut down by Milio, which I see um, Con Esports, excuse me, Con Esports uh, support playing a bit of Milio. So we'll see what kind of uh, draft identity these guys want to reveal in the first couple of picks. And we're still getting set up on the draft here, but it does give us some time to talk a bit more. Is actually, oh, hey, look at that. I get cut off by the teams ready to get prepped in here. So let's go ahead and throw it on over to the draft screen here for if, if we're ready to go through. Con Esports on that blue side. We're going to start getting through these picks in bands. And, you know, myself and Jordan Bot highlighted a lot of these bottom lane prios. You talked about the <laughs> Melio. We'll see if there's some sort of double range that you might try and throw here. But I, I, there's a lot of things for Con to try and take away off the board. And hopefully, they decided to take something away soon, and it's n nothing that I was talking about, Jordan Bot. <laughs> Akali is one of those hidden OP champs that take away some of the control works. We expected to see that Lilia ban on the side of Rucky, Rubber Ducky Gaming. Um, Senor Paco the Taco is looking like a Lilia connoisseur, and that shuts down a lot of the AD junglers on the other side. So Mashu looking to, to get himself a favorable matchup, and there goes the Belveth. Yeah, Belveth, Lilia taking away a lot of jungle prio, which... Does, you know, it does make me curious what uh, Rubber Ducky Gaming wants to try and think about with their turn picks. What are they willing to give up and are thinking about that maybe Con Esports might decide to throw out their way because you can blind, like we talked about in Ash, if you leave it up, you can blind a Karma right now. And usually you expect, what does the response look like on, towards the bot side potentially? That's what I've seen a lot of red side teams go for, but obviously, Mr. Jordan Bot, you, you would have a better idea, I think, than I on what the response drafts looks like from a red side <laughs> after B1. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, the Cho'Gath uh, ban on that one side does scream to me that Rubber Duck Gaming is thinking about Cassante top lane. That is uh, Flames bread and butter for sure. And right away, we're Milio ban one side, Azir ban the other, and we'll go B1. See yeah, Azir. Azir is certainly, you know, I, I definitely with you. The Corky is just like a, a you know league of its own, especially with malignance being a factor with Corky. Azir is still just always around here, just being a big threat and. 
I guess I get to take a, you know a little bit of a pat on the shoulder. It's it's an obvious pick, all right. I didn't I'm not gonna pretend like it wasn't top three B ones right now. But the karma will be locked in for Con Esports to give them that flexibility. And like you talked about, Jordan Bot, the Varus hover here makes a ton of sense, really with yep. either of these squads. Yep, and it does show a lot of face up. Uh, the karma is definitely a support mid flex for both those players. So we'll see where it does end up going. We'll see what they look to pair Varus with. I believe they'll lock a jungler here just based on, unless they're trying to secure some power. Like I said, Corky is still up. So there's the Udir, and that's technically a top jungle flex, but I imagine um, we're probably going to be seeing that jungle just based off of past experience. Yeah, all right. That, that would be intriguing, right? Because what's been dominating, I know people were always praising how the LCK, everybody was trying to play that teleport ghost Udir that was just the unkillable dude who could shield for a bunch. You can't get him down low at all. He's got a pretty safe lane. It's hard to kill him. Really hard to punish champions. So taking that to the jungle would certainly be an interesting little switch up from what I've seen the past couple months. What's not an interesting switch up is pairing the Ezreal with the Karma. So you get a ton of poke, a ton of range and lane and safety that I know you were talking about earlier, Jordan, but with Ezreal. Yep. And we'll see what Rubber Ducky Gaming can pair to disrupt this because a lot of power coming in here very early on. Trundle has early jungle control and Ezreal Karma are going to look to put from a push bottom. And Seraphine in my head does not disrupt any of that. So maybe it's a Seraphine mid, maybe they do some wonky stuff in drafts, but so far um, Khan has a very straightforward early game plan of push and win through bot right now. Yeah, I like Trundle as, as an answer to U Udyr a lot. It's really hard to control him, uh, especially in the side lane. I don't even necessarily think you have to get like two ahead in your lane on Trundle just to become a, a threat later in the side lane. And right now, it, it's going to be kind of difficult for Rubber Ducky even to answer him. Obviously, they have a lot more of the draft to go through. They might even, like you mentioned, Jormbot, throw a different top laner up against this Trundle, which I would be a fan of because you kind of need to try and put him down earlier. Uh, from what I've seen recently, but we're speeding through the second phase of bands and they are just all mid lane centric. Yep, we'll see where we go from here. I was thinking the, the trundle at first looking like a jungle pick, but you're actually right. It totally is a top jungle flex. So still uh, a lot of identity uh, still hidden in these these last few picks. We're going to find out what teams are really playing for. Well, it looks like uh, Con Esports has the same idea you do, uh, Jordan, but about the Udyr here. They do throw a Fiora ban over towards Rubber Ducky Gaming, so they're expecting that Udyr maybe to go into the jungle. And this is the fun part of the draft. This is because where we really start to figure out how these comps really take hold and, and center around. And that Victor lock-in does mean that Seraphine is going to be going towards the bottom lane with that Varus, which kind of in my mind gives us kind of a sleeper bottom lane where I don't think either squad is really going to want to do too much fighting. I can already tell you who's going to outscale who. And Rubber Ducky Gaming, if they, if they make it to their item power spikes, oh my lord, they will run over Con Esports here with what they've drafted. They have so much hard CC, so much lockdown. And let's just hope Con can get the ball rolling with these uh, with the Ezreal Karma. Okay, well, it's it's the Ezreal Soraka. Okay, they the want car. some scaling themselves, okay. <laughs> yeah, they want some survivability as well. They're going to get Jax as well. All right, this is this is becoming a very intriguing draft to me. They're it not is only spicy. The, yeah, they're also doubly down the split push too. So the Trundle is in the jungle. But, I mean, if you're going to take Trundle split pushing out of the top lane, Jax is a pretty good replacement. Yep, I will not argue with there. What will we go R5? We know Flame likes the Cassante. Aatrox may be a possibility. Gwen, obviously an option as a skill matchup. And we're going to go over something stable unless the Udir is going top lane. We really Ooh. don't know what's going to happen until we reveal the uh, the flex pick options here. Yeah, once we get to that Clyde side draft, we'll have a bit of an idea. Because to be honest, I, I think Con Esports still could throw. I know Jack's jungle has been a big thing as well in season 14 that they could throw their way. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of question marks here, but like you mentioned, there's a lot of range in hard CC that Rubber Ducky are certainly throwing. Uh, but the response from Con Esports and Soraka, in a way it's like, uh, it's it's ba they're trying to play that disengage comp or, or they're trying to survive some of that hard CC, right? The Soraka can kind of bail out. Maybe your Trundle getting picked off, getting a bit chunked down a bit. Maybe this Jax getting jumped onto, just trying to kind of out heal through Rubber Ducky. But I don't know how confident I am in that plan necessarily up against a Victor, a Seraphine that can match the healing and shielding in a lot of ways. And this yeah. Varus, which I'm curious, do you think would be, is this a more on hit kind of angle or are you expecting the lethality? 
I would expect an on hit Varus here. Um, he's a little bit outraged, but he can ramp off of Trundle. Uh, but really, I I don't entirely know. Lethality is insanely good right now. So uh, if he feels that's appropriate to match the Ezreal Karma spacing, then then we're gonna see a lethality. I think that's that's maybe more consistent. But what I see, Con Con Esports has drafted a tempo comp. If they can maintain pressure and push in several lanes and they can get the ball rolling and keep the ball rolling, I can see them coming out ahead in terms of dragons and grubs and towers and that kind of thing and get a nice early gold lead. But what I see from Rubber Ducky Gaming is a lot of reliability, a lot of scaling, a lot of hard CC. And like I was saying, Con Esports did take out some, or they, they picked some scaling options for themselves in the Soraka Jacks. But on the side of Rubber Ducky Gaming, they just have so many buttons to press. So if they actually find their moment into the game to push Con Esports and contest them on one of these dragons or uh, in, in some kind of skirmish that they can find themselves, people are getting locked down. People are not going to be able to move with what uh, the Maokai are into the Seraphine are, into the forest, like comp, like someone will, will fall. There, there's no safety with some of these champions. Yeah, if it's layered correctly, someone quite literally doesn't get to play the game. I mean, there, there's enough hard CC there to lock someone down. I know everyone likes a meme that like Morgana cues feel like they root you for like five seconds. This is a comp from Rubber Ducky Gaming that will be able to charm root targets for more than three to five seconds if done correctly here. So the target selection is going to be something big to watch through. I do have some updates for you guys at home as we are getting through the client side draft. It's Sir Raven on the Trundle top lane for COD Esports. It is Senior Paco the Taco on Jack's jungle. And then the opposite side, it is the Udyr top that most people expect the Maokai jungle slotted for Rubber Ducky Gaming as well. So with those in mind, you know, talk to me, Jordan, about, about some of the, maybe the top lane matchup. What are you expecting this Trundle versus Udyr to look like? Trundle versus Udyr, wow. <laughs> uh, I would say neither party can kill each other. Uh, Maokai has advantage in the sense that he can three camp much healthier than Jax can. So there is a world where Maokai looks to do something early on to the Trundle. Trundle is a bit of a stat stick, so we'll see we'll see who stat checks who. But with the amount of speed, sustain, uh, like wave op wave control options, I don't see a lot of volatility voluntarily in uh, the Trundle Udir matchup. I don't, I don't see that going uh, explosive, but we will see. Yeah, to be honest with you, Jordan, I don't see any of these lanes going really explosive <clears throat> unless either of these junglers show up. I mean, Karma's Victor in the mid lane, like that's just a poke off. Victor's, uh, when do you see the Victor player playing super aggressive unless it's an obvious opportunity presented to him? <laughs> and then you also have an Ezreal Soraka versus Seraphine Varus, which even if it's a lethality Varus, that just becomes a poke off. Exactly. No, I, I completely agree. I'm excited to get in the game. We'll see what these guys can do. Yeah, but I do want to make sure to to shout out a sponsor at home because obviously there's coaches on both sides of these teams that have cooked up these drafts, trying to set up their players for success and ultimately end up winning the ADL. But there's also an ability, there's also a certain company out here trying to help all you guys at home that are potentially looking to maybe help other players out coaching. It's Coachify GG. We're really proud that they are sponsoring Aegis once again across all leagues this winter split. Uh, Coachify GG it provides tools for esports coaches to manage their teams and players while also finding new students. Click the panel located just below the stream to check out their website for more information. And while you guys do that, make sure to go Check out Coachify GG. We are going to take things to a break while we go through Spectator Lay. Game one, though, right on the horizon. Rubber Ducky Gaming versus Con Esports.
It may not be League of Legends 2, but it is a brand new season, a new here for the ADL, kicking things off. Khan Esports on the blue side, Rubber Ducky Gaming on the red side. Certainly a draft that threw both myself and Jordan Bob for a bit of a loop here, but we are finally here to play it out, see exactly how those analytical numbers and our thoughts on the draft will play out, because I guarantee you, and it's gonna happen a lot this season, Jordan Bot. things we expect, we should be expecting the unexpected is what I'm trying to say. 100%. Let's see what these teams come up with. Let's see if we can find some creative angles. I'm probably looking towards the five minute mark to see where the priority is in the lanes to see what options uh, players have. But Jax's early clear is not very healthy. So Maokai will take initiative most likely on the first uh, gank that he would like to go for. I do want to take a moment because now we're going to look at the full rosters. Is uh, I actually believe Connie's Force just won the game. Jed lands a skill shot uh, pre minions crashing. Uh, I would give them the win if I could totally do it off team names or uh, use screen names here. Uh, the jungle mid duo for Con Esports, just elite names here. Senior Paco the Taco. I know you said that one earlier, Jordan Bot. Sick name. And then LL Cool Jace. It would be cooler if he was playing Jace, but I mean, that's just gotta be, that's just a fun name. And hey, look, he deserves the skill shot win because of the name. That's that's the only logic there. There we go. Off to a great early start. We're noticing both teams are leashing, and that is not a decision that I can really support. When you're playing double ranged bottom, the lane that initiates getting the push will likely win out on the first couple of minutes uh, in terms of pressure, in terms of options. So both guys leashing kind of says, handshake, okay, who gets it now? We don't know. And uh, maybe when we said all these names would be snoozer, well, uh, both these top players just pop ghosts and nearly got first blood here, so. Oh, they absolutely even... just want to kill each other right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why, why, would, why would you wait? Why would you wait? Why not? I mean, you could win now instead of potentially lose now. So it, it makes sense, right? Level two, though, does come through first for this rubber ducky bottom lane. But like we mentioned, it, it's just going to be a public war. It, it's a lot on these junglers, and we'll see exactly uh, how this Maokai decides to clear across it. It does seem like he's going for more of a full clear, no real three camp. And he might pay for it with an invade. Rundle actually using his priority to get full jungle information. So Connie Sports for the next couple minutes are going to know exactly where Maokai is going to be when he shows on his red here. So no surprises there. Bot lane can hopefully recover some of this. But the easy way to look at the bot matchup is whoever has push right now is winning. It's yeah, simple enough for me in my uh, smaller blame, smaller play by play brain uh, terminology. I appreciate you dumbing it down for me here. It's only for me, guys, not you at home. I, I, I don't play this game at a high level like Jordan bot. So he does get spotted out on the ward and that will give an idea that, hey, for Sir Senior Pock and Taco, I can just go for a full clear. I don't have to worry about really too heavily matching up against this Maokai. And in a 1v1 skirmish, I would assume you'd favor the Jacks in that one if they fight over a Scuttle or potentially Grubs. I would agree that with that. Yeah, it all depends around what lanes are coming where because uh, Maokai can start the uh, initiation on onto the Jacks, and then if Victor's behind, they can chain CC and really threaten him. Um, but yeah, it, it, all, it all comes down to who controls vision, who gets the pounce on who. But you see Jax picking up a recall and he's just gonna keep his tempo strong in the jungle. Some trading bot lane. Nothing too serious just yet. Did see lethal tempo come across there for Revan. And I just realized that we have a Sir Raven and a Revan on opposite teams. That's gonna be fun going forward here. A reset from Senior Bog of the Taco means that uh, Masho is gonna be able to pick up that first scuttle for free. And yeah, everyone's just kinda Kindly handshaking, clears, handshake and poke, except for those top laners. And it's kind of what we expected once we saw, got through this draft. 
Yep, Soraka's now kind of uh, established herself as the dominating presence in the lane. And yeah, like I said before, kind of get the push. Oh, we see Maokai going for the first gank of the game. Yeah, but Sir Raven might just fight it out here. He doesn't have flash or ghost, so he has no way to get on top of flame. And with the low health bars, Macho can't really find a turn there. So Sir Raven is just going to end up being safe, surviving that gank. Here comes Unless the re-gauge. Yep, flash knockback and die by words immediately. First blood to flame. Good for Macho on the re-engage to get Rubber Ducky Gaming on the board. Just an ounce of disrespect since sniffed out by Void Mummy, and uh, we're gonna see Sir Paco the Taco try to try to answer on the opposite side of the map with a Gromp invade. Yeah, but that's a, a small fleeting prize here uh, compared to the the gold you get first blood here, and that's what we talked about on draft, right? Is with how Trundle has been so far this season, that menacing side lane, you kind of do want to try and shut him down early. So I like to see that Macho and Flame combine there to go up and get that first blood. And now the debate that I want to have with you, Jordan Bot, I, I want to get your opinion on this, because obviously that first Drake is being taken by Senior Paco the Taco. And actually, I might have to hold that question towards you, because it looks like Rubberducky Gaming want to try and contest it. Fight. Oh, Flash does not go well for Senior Paco the Taco. He is way too low, and it's going to be the Seraphine picking that one up. Influence grabs it, and Gnomes is going to fall next to Revan. So it looks like Void Mommy just has the number of Senior Paco the Taco, and now Rubber Ducky are much in the driver's seat. Yes, that was actually detrimental to Jax. He decided to take uh, the Gromp invade and the dragon kind of solo without his team's help and was appropriately punished for it. You you would want to imagine what, what would what would the game look like if Jax went heavy economy and cleared all his camps up to the grubs because that, that sequence sounds very winning. Um, but they do get punished and now the, uh, the Seraphine Varus lane is going to start getting a lot of items really fast. Yeah, and they get the Infernal Drake over top as well. So your Pog Taco did beeline in topside to grab those grubs, so he should be pretty uncontested with the pushing lanes he has to at least pick up, I'd assume all of them with, with the camps up here for Void Mommy, but like we talked about, that's kind of just a consolation prize and you mentioned the scaling factor that Rubber Ducky Gaming has, I mean they've got the gold in a lot of ways in the right positions for those scaling champions right now. Yep, that first dragon being the infernal dragon is going to feel really nice. And just as I say that, I've noticed a blasting one making it into Maokai's inventory. I really wonder what kind of tree build we're going for here as there's fighting in our own jungle. Yeah, it's Void Mommy once again catching Seer Pog with the taco. First round is going to be Knight here, but he is the lower HP. The Chaos Storm is dropped over top, but with that low HP, isn't willing to follow up any further. So it'll just be a punish. No kills found. Yeah, and that's that's a slippery situation that the Karma mid having a lot of pressure early, um, that we were able to avoid disaster there because the lockdown could have came through and that Jax could have been uh, sent back to spawn again. Fighting in the bot lane now. Yep, here's some lockdown. Double root Jet having to flash away. The Soraka healing though, making sure Jet stays just safe. But that Chains of Corruption already showing its ugly head here for Connie Sports' bot lane. Yep. Whenever you see mana on Varus getting the, to this level, the aggression kind of subsides. They'll they'll lick their wounds bot lane con esports, and um, they'll take a bit of a tempo loss. Rubber Ducky Gaming gets the first recall um, here to get some get their buy off, and then they'll get onto the map first. So we'll see what happens, but uh, nothing too crazy as we're approaching that level six mark. Yeah, and there's not a lot for them to take with that that prior, right? They get the first back. The Drake was already taken, Void Grips are off the board, so not too much here. We do see top side Senior Pog with Taco utilizing that push from his top laner to try and set up a lane game. Yeah, but Pinky gank here. Yeah, it's really hard to just lock down an Udyr. I mean, it's, it's so hard to gank this champion, especially when your top laner is yeah. below 40% HP. And it looks like Rubby Dark, the Rubber Ducky Gaming only know what damage items are. We see the haunting guys in the Udyr's inventory. He said, I'm going Leandri's. I'm going to kill everyone. They're playing aggressive. They're playing like they're the team that is, is afraid of getting outscaled, <laughs> which, which doesn't, isn't necessarily the scenario here, but can't blame a team for going aggressive to try and just throw a knockout blow. This is as well, you know, not just a best of one, folks. We're, we're, we're going the distance with BO3s, so. It, it kind of, uh, if you look at the overarching aspect of best of threes, I don't hate trying to just punch a team in the mouth as hard as you can and maybe knock them down for a clean 2-0. Well. Oh, Maokai's level six. He's looking for the Soraka. See if anyone gets interested because Maokai really does want to use that and Soraka's getting dangerously close. 
flash. Okay, yeah. I have the flash though to pursue. Oh, he has the distance for the twisted, twisted advance. advance. Into the chains of corruption. That combo is too clean in an instant. Goodbye, gnomes, and that is a Soraka's worst nightmare. And they're actually going to posture for a bot lane dive now with the push they have. We see Victor moving down, and with the Maokai ulti, I don't see many ways Ezreal can navigate this situation. Yep, he's getting straight in your pocket. The top will come over quickly. But there's the nature's grass. They're going to lock him down under the dirt and drop as much damage on his head. It is way too clean from Rubber Ducky Gaming right now. What a start to game one. This is the team that I remember. I've actually casted them once before, and they played very smart League of Legends, so I like what I'm seeing right now. And they are, they're basking in it. 3K gold lead at 10 minutes is just so much more massive, right? We talk about what gold leads look like depending on the time in the game. A 10 minute 3K gold lead is very equivalent to just so much more later in the game. Top side, we do see ults dropping on top here. Sir Revan does drop the subjugate, but like we talked about, it's just so hard to really knock down and kill off this Udyr from Flame. Yep. So now the priority goes back over. So we're going to think about Dragon that's up in one minute. So Rubber Ducky Gaming taking their bot lane and jungle recalls now. And the question is, is Maokai going to clear down to it and they play retake? Or are they going to try and get there early to try and generate a sort of a pick opportunity? Well, they certainly have the itemization leads in the bot side of the map as well. Revan has now... You got that Vamp Scepter, a pickaxe, tier two boots as well for the on hit, which is just very, very nice feeling on yeah, this forest. Yep. And we just so that. just as I say that, the grubs spawned, so it looks like Maokai is looking to go grubs into Dragon. It looks like Rubber Ducky Gaming trying to say, right now, in the next two minutes, we're taking the entire map. Yeah, and I like this. I, I, I know Void Grubs have been kind of overestimated how OP they are, uh, but I do believe the, the big thing is just making sure one squad doesn't get five or six of them. And, I like that prio from Void Mommy to just make sure that they will pick up at least two of them, but there might see some fighting here over it. No subjugate available for this trundle, but a big encore. They just it's locked down the trundle. The Wish doesn't get enough over to heal Sir Raven. He falls. Senior Pog, the talker might be next. Chaos Storm yeah, is going to give him enough damage. That flash was not in time, and it's just all up Rubber Ducky Gaming right now. Absolutely massive fight coming out there. They didn't want to fight the dragon bottom because they said uh, Ezreal's on Sheen right now and Varus is on a lot more than that. So they said, no, we're going to fight the Grubs with four away from the Varus power. And it did not work out in their favor at all. So Rubber Duck Gaming taking a very commanding lead now. And this one is starting to just get a bit out of control. Uh, they, <laughs> they've even got a lot of gold injected into this Seraphine from uh, Heaven or Vegas, which, you know, it's a support Seraphine, but like we touched on earlier, Jordan, but the shielding power of a Seraphine later in a game is, is so dangerous, and those early kills is just gonna let that point come earlier. Absolutely. Yep, the scaling options coming online. We see Seraphine mostly in the AD carry role nowadays, um, but Seraphine support with this much gold is gonna accomplish a lot of the same, a lot of the same things. And what does Voinami not accomplish this game? Now gonna pick up that Drake. No real threatening steal attempt there. Jed just trying to land one of those essence flunks into the queues, but that's gonna lock down the second Drake as well for Rubber Ducky Gaming in case things aren't already going well for them. A very good soul as well for them to scale up to. Ocean Soul is on the board for game number one. As if there wasn't enough healing and shielding in this game, we said Ocean, let's bathe in it. And this is where it's gonna feel really bad. The difference in pacing in jungling between the Maokai and the Jax. You notice that Maokai can sack any and all camps and run straight to the objective in the fights. And then on the inverse side, Jax is very heavy economy and can't can't afford to kind of take a break from those. Looks like we have been scorned by the spectator bug here. So <laughs> we are in a bit of a pause here. And I do like to utilize that as, you know, maybe a point to talk a bit more about the game here and what we should see going forward. But Jordanbot, it just kind of feels like this one is off the rails. How do you even get back in here if you are Con Esports with how much they've already given up through 13 minutes? So, <laughs> the way to systematically sort of give yourself an opportunity to get back in the game is you want to look for situations where they're coming into your pockets of vision and you can pounce on them. So use the Karma speed up to get a Drax stun, to get a Karma root on a player that's not really expecting it. The problem with this is 
they're starting to lose priority. So now that Victor is getting close to his first item, now that uh, Udyr is getting close to his first item, and now that the bot lane has has such a commanding lead, they're going to start getting pushed in. And with the amount of vision that's going to come down from the Seraphine, combine that with the saplings that can help defuse some of these dangerous bushes, it's going to be really, really hard for Connie Esports with the champions that they've drafted to find a way to kind of wrestle their way back into this one. Certainly is going to be difficult here, just like the technical difficulties we have with spectators. So we're not going to stay on here too much longer. Right now, we're going to throw to a break so we can try and see if we can fix things. But by all accords, Rubber Ducky Gaming very much in control of game one, looking to take a lead in their first series of the ADL.
Hello again, everybody. I, I know it's not as fun to sit here and see us up here. You'd much rather be looking at game one here between Connie Sports and Rubber Ducky Gaming. But unfortunately, right now, Riot is having a big struggle bus when it comes to spectator. Uh, it, it, the, it's a freeze issue and nothing we could do from our production side can fix it. Whenever we freeze at whatever point in the game, we're stuck there for the entirety of the game. Reconnecting, none of it fixes it. It's an issue that's really affecting a lot of leagues right now and unfortunately comes here to the ADL. So. What we're going to do here for you guys is we're going to go to a, a, a pretty long uh, intermission here and just wait until game two. We're going to try and get through game two uh, and hopefully game potentially game three. But if we do run into this, this issue one more time, that's going to be it for the broadcast. There's not much here that Aegis can do with this problem. It is a, a right issue. So unfortunately, we'll come back on here on the air in a bit with the result of game number one and hop straight into game number two draft. But until then, sit tight and we'll see you guys hopefully sooner rather than later.
Y'all sit back and watch me speak. About to take over your screen. Talking bulls in 93. Talk, talking my mom on TV. Y'all know all I do is me. All I, all I do is me. Y'all sit back and watch me speak. Y'all sit back and uh -huh. All I know, my money green. About to snap and make a scene. My cup off and make this free. My, my cup off and make them scream. Go back off for TMZ. Y'all sit back and watch me speak. Y'all sit back and watch me speak. Y'all sit back and watch. Watch me, 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 Don't catch no feelings. Watch me. Watch me. Get back and watch. Get back and watch. Get back and watch. If it ain't got style, I ain't with it. I ain't with it. If it ain't got style, I ain't with it. Look, look. If it ain't got style, I ain't with it. I ain't with it. If it ain't got style, I ain't with it. Look, look. Look, look. Look, look. Look, look. Watch me. 
We're finally back, everybody. Uh, we have the conclusion of game number one here. No surprise, as we'll make sure to throw up the uh, post-game stat sheet here to look at it. Rubber Ducky Gaming did take game one. Uh, it went 18 to three in kills. The, the, the intriguing thing to me, though, Jordan Bot, is this game did still take 32 minutes, uh, which I wouldn't have assumed with where we were at when the freeze happened. It's an acceptable end. It's it's a slow and steady. They probably didn't take a tremendous amount of risks. And with the wave clear coming in from Karma Ezreal, the game might have stalled a little bit. But the bottom line is Rubber Ducky got the game one win, and they did not let us down. But what, what I can say is if you guys are feeling a little bit let down, Riot did let us down just a little bit with that spectator bug. Um, but all of you patient viewers out there that have been sticking around and bearing with us through the technic technical difficulties in the break, you guys all have a three game win streak coming on in your horizon the next time you guys queue up. So you guys will be happy to have that. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hopefully get you out of uh, one of those hard stuck divisions you're in. Get, we're not, uh, uh, we're not gonna make any promises past the three game win streak. All right. So you can't get mad at us outside that window. Um, but thank you, like Jordan, I mentioned for staying through. We are trying to set up here for game number two draft, and it does sound like Khan Esports will be going to the red side. So they, they're switching off blue, Jordan Bot, which, which from what I've seen in like OQs and like the GSL stage of NACL qualification, everybody just wants to stay blue. So it has been intriguing to me. I have heard the same thing, but it all just depends on where your priorities are at. If you have that top laner that that is that like the fist fight matchup, I want to dominate my opponent with my abusive counter pick. Red side can be more valuable. Um, blue side is typically good for that for that power pick. So uh, Khan uh, Esports had the read of Karma is unbeatable. And now they've gotten a good data point to suggest what do we need to surround the Karma with? Um, to help it succeed. And what I noticed is, again, Khan just had zero buttons to push. No one can initiate on that team. Uh, I'm sure the players are capable, but they just didn't have any any initiating tools, right? And that that's, that's kind of a feels bad, um, especially at this level. So Rubber Ducky Gaming had infinity buttons to push. We saw them lock down members before the, the spectator bug, and that was how they were able to establish a commanding lead. Yeah, they really showed, you know, we, we can see like the full force of all the CC they can throw together. Well, we, we kind of did, but they were doing a really good job, especially the bottom lane of chaining, no pun intended here, chains of corruption into that double root on the Seraphine to just already lock down. And that was before we even got to see the full force of that nature's grass coming in. You obviously have a gravity field a Victor can throw down as well. So Rubber Ducky Gaming re look really strong off the bat. But, you know, as we're setting up for this game number two draft, I, I want to I want to pick your brain a bit here. So you talked about red side. Maybe they want to get Sir Raven into a good spot to succeed here. Are you expecting some sort of safer meta top lane bands maybe coming out earlier maybe that udir already gets taken away just so you don't have to deal with the safety of that champion from rubber ducky gaming it's really hard uh with these kind of situations because there's just so much to choose from right now league of legends 2 or patch 14.2 or or season 2024 as we like to call it just has so much to offer um so there's so many secrets under under the rocks to to still be discovered um so we'll just see we'll have to see what kind of themes are present but Bottom line is, Khan Esports need to be talking amongst each other. We need someone to pick an initiation tool. We need to be able to pick fights, right? The, the, the Maokai pick, whether it's a super powerful pick in the jungle or not, it's a I'll go first tool. And that's incredibly valuable to have on a competitive team because then the damage dealers just kind of follow suit, right? Yeah, and like you talked about, there are a lot of options, especially in the jungle right now for champions that are kind of all about going first, especially, you know, the, the Xin Zhao is one that a lot of people have been prowling heavy. I know in the LCS level, a lot of teams have been either banning or picking Vi really early on uh, because you, you know what you're getting with Vi. And there's a lot of great options like you talked about just in the game right now. And a lot of them that can follow up a Vi. So I wouldn't hate if Khan just went for a simplistic composition here that just orients on, all right, we're going to pick one person to kind of just target and we're going to pick champions around that to try and blow them up. It, it's it's a simplistic comp to play through and, and something that I think a lot of teams should try and go back to have one of those comps that they can just kind of root themselves back in, especially in best of threes where you win that game too. All of a sudden, a lot of people would, would give you the edge to end the series right with momentum. Yep. 
Yep, for sure. They're going to have to come out with something. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be creative because I'm, I'm starting to look at the draft phases, uh, specifically those four and five picks when we locked in the Soraka Jacks. Did we cook a little bit too hard? Ezreal Karma is a known bot lane duo that can perma push and can be that pressure point that you want to get the early ball rolling. Um, so, so why did we put the Karma mid and get our Soraka beside us, right? We need initiation tools. We need lockdown. We need CC. You have Soraka, Karma, Ezreal, and Trundle on the same team. Who who's locking down who, right? Yeah, it feels like they leaned they leaned too hard into what they drafted earlier, right? It's like, all right, yeah. we, we picked yeah. we picked a, a Trundle. So it's like, oh, okay, maybe they'll do some split pushing. They double down. It's like, okay, you get a jack. So what, you guys, you guys yeah. get a double side lane. Like that's let's let's get back to basics. Let's get let's get an Ash. Let's get a Jarvan. Let's get an Oriana. Like just just something where the go button is just it's not something you have to think too hard about. You see a target, you shoot something at the target. If it hits, we keep going forward. Kind of thing like that, right? That that's that's a competitive team's greatest asset, in my opinion. One thing we didn't get to see yet because of the uh, unfortunate delays we had or the freeze we had was another aspect of, of how season 14 has changed. I, I kind of want to pick your brain. This is, you know, a, a little random, Jordan, but we're stalling here to get draft here. The new Barons, curious, wh wh which one are you the most fan of? Wh which variation of the Baron is your favorite? The, the, the tunnel one, the double wall one, or just good old fashioned old Baron? What I will say, so I have a very specific thought about this. I haven't dove into, because Baron Steel, like us as league players, we're a lot about how something feels in the moment. We, we look at numbers, but then you can't really contextualize it until you've been there, right? So I don't have enough experience on the patch to know, oh, this Baron means I have to play the situation this differently, right? What I will say is the change is so refreshing to approach the Baron pit and the actual terrain is changed. I love that one with the uh, the narrow walls um, uh, on, yeah. on either side where there's sort of a lot of different attack angles. And the one thing that I absolutely am certain of is that when all 10 players are up, one team seems to get mind controlled to start the Baron. And that's my favorite moment as the team that might be behind in the game, because Baron is the number one throw button, in my opinion. And when they, oh, when, yeah. when I see five champions start it and I run up there with my engage, uh, we, we turn the whole game upside down on its head after we've been getting pummeled for 15 minutes. Right. So don't, don't touch that purple worm unless you're ready to, to face the consequences. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, Baron is just buffed up, uh, buffed up as well. So it's harder to take Baron uh, in season 14 on top of that. I'm also just a big fan. Uh, you, you know, you, you, it might be played a part of that mind control you were talking about uh, that the music changes when you start hitting Baron and it gets all like epic and you, you feel like you can feel like your heart rate spike up a little bit. It's like, oh, we're kind of in like a big boss fight now. So we have to we we have to tunnel in and kill the Baron. The music is telling us, you know, kind of deal. Uh, obviously subconscious things, but I'm definitely a fan uh, of a lot of the ways that Baron also got changed. But there's been a lot of uh, item changes as well. Uh, have you seen any? Uh, we didn't really see a lot of them in the last game. But are there any that you're a big fan of or are really hating on? I would have said Storm Surge personally, Jordan Bot, but they, they kind of nerfed it. So it's kind of not a completely busted item anymore. I would say the Storm Surge um, Shadow Flame combo on an AP Assassin just feels... Um insane <laughs> so it feels like uh, a colleague can kind of just erase her target no matter what like it feels like i've dodged her q i've dodged her e and then i'm dead um so that feels kind of feels bad man but i'm a bot laner so you already know that i'm i'm several levels down the curve um and then there's this uh crazy champion that was uh he's been in the game for a little while you guys might know him he started in avengers endgame he was the purple guy they call him atrox or or thanos and when he builds Sundered Sky and crits you, he can actually heal for about 2,000 HP. So that's that's a feature that I've noticed. Uh, I, I've been scratching my head a little bit uh, with with the new season. But I will say, like, every, every roll feels, maybe except for those 80 carry mains out there, every roll feels amazing to play. There's so much item diversity that was added to the game. I'm a support main myself, and the... Uh, support quest completions as well as the new items and not being tied to that mythic build path has been absolutely amazing you actually get to express your creativity and you get to you get to activate different modes that a champion can can uh 
serve, right? So if you play Rakan, you can play Protect Rakan with with Locket. You can play Engage Rakan with Zeke's uh, Zeke's Convergence into Imperial Mandate if you want, right? Like there's just so much going on. Um, there's so many options. You can pick defensive, of offensive, uh, utility. Like it, it's you can go Redemption on. Like you can do whatever you want. It's it's unlocked. League of Legends Two is here. Yeah, I, I I love it. I love the energy. Even if I am an AD carry main, I, even even with AD carry, I I think I hate that every season it feels like I have to come on here and talk about how some some of it is warranted <laughs> warranted the whining and some of it is like a little overbearing. There still is, you know, champions I think are strong, especially with the item diversity. One that comes to my mind is I think Jin is a lot more fun because you can kind of still lean into some of that lethality crux, but you can also you know still get back some of that crit and some of that range you can build into later. So that's always fun. I know a lot of people have had having a lot of fun playing around with Misfortune. Nyla has been coming back in because there's a lot of fun ways you can build that champion as well. The weird thing to me though, Jordan Bot is, is it's like, it's the first time in League in a while where Triforce just is kind of more of the one, one of irrelevant items in a way. Yeah, I, I don't know too many Triforce. I haven't been seeing any Gangplank, uh, like, uh, what is, I think Fiora's just building Sundered Sky. Yep. Um, Ezreal's not, there's, building, there's a Ezreal's lot of great, not building Triforce, not anymore. There's a lot of great options, but there's a lot of items that feel like they're almost never seen or never built. Um, and that's that's just on Riot to to find the balance point, right? There's there's clear balance outliers. There's, there's uh, future nerfs coming to a lot of the items that we are we are using now and then when the the playing field gets a little bit more level um and more things about the patch get discovered um but but bottom line is you can express your creativity now in a way that you couldn't last season unfortunately uh, everybody at home we oh, we are having some lobby issues again this one will get sorted out uh but we do already have to throw it to a break to figure things out with this one again. I apologize, folks, but this one will be shorter than the last. So when we come back, we will be live with game number two draft, Connie Sports, Rubber Ducky Gaming.
Promised you guys it wouldn't take too long, and look at that. We're finally underway here into draft number two, game number two here of our opening ADL series. We already highlighted both these teams extensively, so Jordan Bot, just tell me what you're seeing on the screen right now. Let's talk about these picks and bands, because boy, they fly like hotcakes. These guys had a little bit too much time to talk, so we are firing through it. Lilia, Chogath, Azir burned on the blue side, red side. Maokai, Belveth, Akali off the table. Karma, B1, Lucian Milio, instant response. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm a fan of how Khan's adjusting. I, I think Lucian Milio is one of the better ones. I think I just think Milio is a very overpowered support right now in the game as well. Uh, Felios can pair up really well with him if you want to play for scaling later and just becoming unkillable with that range, but Lucian Milio can certainly bully early. Rubber Ducky Gaming, though, certainly have two pretty strong meta picks as well in the, in the cards through B1 and B2 as well. Really interested to see how this bot lane matchup goes because Karma beats Milio in a vacuum, and then Ash it does well into Lucian in a vacuum. But Ash becomes nullified by Milio, like the arrow gets countered by Milio alt, right? And then Lucian has enough stat checking with the Milio power to push off what Karma and Ash can do. So I'm actually really excited to see this kind of matchup. And Rocky, Rubber Ducky Gaming, again, if they establish push, they can start really starting to get that poke down and then Lucian runs out of options. They are, you know, Khan is leaning on what you were talking about, right? Just grounding yourself in some sort of foundation. Maybe this it's not the champion that can say, I'm going, but can set up for the rest. Oriana, always a safe mid lane mage that we've known for season on and season end gonna be locked in there as well for a uh, night so I, I like that pick a lot the trundle from rubber ducky gaming it's intriguing I, I don't know what's in the blue side water uh but whatever it is they love trundle <laughs> they love karma yep keep drinking the blue side water rubber ducky gaming already have go buttons they already have some scaling options trundle with a karma behind them uh pretty scary ash with an enchanter also pretty scary they have early game control i like what i'm seeing i hope that con gaming and their coach was talking about who can go first. And to have a functional four-man unit with the Lucian, Milio, Oriana, we absolutely need an engaged jungler on the four pick, preferably from Con Gaming. And Rubber Ducky Gaming recognized that, right? I, I love the Vi ban. Yep. Uh, that's an easy ball delivery system. Udir ban also gets thrown out here. Nocturne, there it is. Okay. Yeah, exactly, We found something. Right. We found something with decisiveness. Nocturne, Oriana is a scary combo. If the duo does practice it, um, Oriana can shockwave as Nocturne leaves the range and then also instant Rs when Nocturne arrives. And mm -hmm. we've seen that in, in the pro level and it looks unreactable from the target get receiving it so that that's not fun um but nocturne is that carry pick that milio and oriana can service early and then oriana obviously comes on with the scaling so i actually really like what con has drafted for themselves so far yeah i almost want rubber ducky gaming to ban it but it seems they would rather prio giving trundle a lane where he can be a, a medicine uh but then again, you know R5 was probably going to go topside, so you're probably still going to get some sort of counter that's going to make Trundle's lane not as fun as we saw the Uder trundle matchup was last game. Uh, they are going to hover the Aatrox here in Make Me Eat My Words. Uh, it's actually Aatrox trundle is a bit trundle. better of a blind, yeah. Aatrox is a bit better of a blind top lane. Trundle can play uh, safe, but he can't live his fantasy. But the, the trio that they already have going on bot side with Ash, Karma, Trundle, that's already really scary. Pillar is very annoying and disruptive and a great way to start a little skirmish and ash auto's following up on that karma range we have some really great tools down here so i'm glad that they went with the aatrox and then we see the poppy answer um pretty decent stylistic counter do i love poppy in this game maybe not but he wanted a uh consistent uh tank top here also, hey, you can turn the pillar against them, right? <laughs> if, if you really line it up correctly. So we'll see how that plays out going forward. But yeah, Aatrox, a good blind. Syndra, I think, I think it's kind of fallen off a, a bit. Um, I don't fall it off is the right word. It's because like Corky became such a big thing and Corky could outrange Syndra. Azir obviously can, can kind of match Syndra in lane a lot. But we've seen Syndra Oriana for like a year now. Like every single game last year was... Azir Oriana, Syndra Oriana, Syndra Azir. So this is certainly a mid lane matchup. I think any, not only caster, just player or watcher like you guys at home have, are very used to watch, seeing over and over again. Yep, it looks like Rubber Ducky Gaming have their ducks in a row. I do like the Karma into Oriana just because 
one, we have another button to push, so Syndra can go first in some of these situations, right, with a, with a long-range stun to set something up. Um, Syndra has a little bit of self-peel from the Nocturne, perhaps, right? It's not the best, but we have a control mage versus a control mage, so we are matching scaling there. Um, can Aatrox live his fantasy of, of running through this team? We'll see what happens. I, I'm, I'm excited to get in the game. Yeah, I, I mean, you already highlighted the fact that uh, we were talking about items and how they've affected the game. And Aatrox with Sundered Sky can't can be, uh, we'll call him a problem uh, going forward. But I think a point I kind of want to touch on that you highlighted, you you showed in the bottom lane, you talked about how like Melio, Ash, or Melio, Lucian, and Ash Karma have ways that they kind of can mitigate the opposite side's play style. I think that's apparent in in the this entire 5v5 by this point, right? Because you do have this Nocturne that you mentioned is going to be able to dive in here, but I think there there are a good amount of tools if the game gets long enough where Nocturne won't really be as much of a threat, kill threat on his own. You do have the Oriana Ball, but I think Syndra is a great way to answer him in a lot of ways. Karma, the shielding, when she gets up later, can answer it in a lot of ways. What I'm interested in is how much is Rubber Ducky Gaming going to lean on this Trundle just kind of splitting up Khan esports because it could bite them in the back with the pick potential that Khan brings. Right, right. Uh, we'll have to see what what kind of what transpires in the early game, but I, I will say I really, really like both compositions this time around. Um, Khan esports did have massive holes in their composition game one, so we're on a lot more even footing. And to talk about the bat the bot lane matchup just a little bit, um, this matchup absolutely swings based on two two factors. The push, who gets push? It should be Karma Ash. But if the Lucian player is really insane at Lucian, the Lucian Milio lane can just like they can just straight up kill somebody, right? So if yeah. Karma Ash are not spacing very carefully, and Lucian finds that perfect like dash in PTA proc ignite drops and and whatnot. Um, we're looking at maybe a, an early first bud, but Rubber Ducky Gaming are going to look to push in multiple lanes, and it's going to be up to Nocturne to decide does he want to does he want to get something going. I would go top lane if I was the Nocturne. The Aatrox might be vulnerable to early early poppy Nocturne um, with the amount of sort of like CC that we have there. We can set up Nocturne for something, but Nocturne needs to be heavy farming, and then so does Trundle. So we might see a uh, a lot of action transpiring at five minutes, but then as I remember what happened game one, maybe we just fist fight in all three lanes right away. No, right? Any, anything is possible. And I am curious as well, if the, once the game gets to that more fighting oriented stage, uh, COD gaming is pretty short ranged. Uh, the Poppy, they get a bit of a buff with Melio coming across to give Lucian some extra range, but I do think if there were ever a game for a Syndra to pop off, uh, influence is in for it here because totally, uh, totally. Got, yep. there, there's just so much great range and also arguably four targets which once the splinters come fully online you'll be able to delete with the click of a button yep yep the onus is going to be on con to disrupt some of these lane matchups because aatrox can achieve push uh syndra oriana that's a bit bit uh ping pong and then the bot lane i would say karma ash should get pushed but if lucian can find that early kill and he kind of needs to whenever you're picking lucian and you see aatrox trundle on the enemy team uh he's not that traditional hyper scaling three items spiking 80 carry he needs to dash in your face and he needs to be able to kill you so if aatrox isn't gonna die to that then we're gonna have problems so many problems that will have answers, so many more questions to be presented as well, but they all will come on the other side of another short break. Hopefully this time we'll finally get through a full game of League of Legends. Let's take a spectator delay ourselves as we get into game two, Kani Sports Rubber Ducky game.
To the Loyal Ages viewers, we finally rewarded you with more League after all the breaks. To anybody that's tuning in right now, nothing else went wrong. It's game two, Rubber Ducky Gaming on the blue side, Khan Esports on your red side, kicking things off and curious to see if we'll get any sort of level one shenanigans here, but looks like a fan start, Jordan Bot. Oh, we see three members just kind of sneaking into a brush. We're probably just trying to get some intel to see where the Nocturne starts to protect the Aatrox, as we kind of talked about before, and we do want our bot lane, the Ash Karma, pushing. So we want to defuse some of the early uh, options that Nocturne has. That is something we really highlighted right in draft is that Nocturne, sometimes you see junglers pick answers to try and invade and get them disrupted because once it's level six, it's a whole different game here for Senior Paco the Taco, but... This is kind of a pretty good Nocturne game, at least to be that menace into the late game, late stage of the early game into that mid game. Because I don't think he's going to be contested too much until Paranoia is around. Yep. I'm very interested to see. So we are opting to leash our jungler. We need to stop this habit to leash our jungler in a competitive game. You guys need to be in that bot lane to establish that early push. It is so incredibly important in these kind of matchups. On one side of the equation knows it, Khan Esports do. And I think it's, it's especially important that they are, as they are way more susceptible to getting poked out in uh, up their lane into a bad push. So the fact that they're just gonna get back there, get started early, get that level two da dash up for Jet as quickly as possible is, is the right way to go about it, like you were talking about. Yep, so we'll see what happens. Well, uh, I imagine Nocturne will full clear to bottom. And get that level six as soon as possible. We're seeing trading early on coming up from the bot lane. Who will establish push and who will get the level two first? Because Lucian needs to have a very good game. It's always tough to play Lucian in a lot of matchups. This game is no different here, even with Melio on his side, like you were talking about, Jordan. Comes, do they yep. find enough damage? There's the press attack. That stings. Those autos really sting. The RQ on the way out. So a, a fairly even trade. We, we like that. Good from both sides. <clears throat> and like we talked about, it's not like either of the jugglers are likely to show up to try and do too much in that matchup. It's definitely kind of a tunnel matchup. Similar kind of thing for the top lane here is we see Flame getting a good combo across here on this Aatrox, gets the chain pullback, but nothing much more than that. So we see Aatrox going for a bit of a wave crash, and that's because both junglers opted into starting their red side. So there's going to be a window where Trundle has a gank opportunity top lane to try and go after the Poppy's flash, um, and Nocturne won't be able to answer. Nocturne is, though, a bit ahead on the clear. I know, they're pretty even as well, actually, in the more that I think about it. One thing also to watch for going forward, uh, I'm sure we'll get some checks on it a stat check on it not this early on but influence i always be curious how a Syndra is doing on the splinter count it's, it's a bit harder to get that going in season 14 than it was in the past but that is what you play for on Syndra now it's a lot different than the, the past where she was an early game kind of bully in lane she wa waits to get to those scaling points at that 40 splinter 60 80 and 100 if i'm not mistaken and then there's one more at 120. So those right. are her restrictions and breakpoints, and when she hits 120, uh, she's reached her late game fantasy of being able to press Q and R and kill anyone. Yeah, I mean, even if you're fed enough, it, it might even just be R. You don't even have to hit the Q. If you just have enough balls out and you hit R, <laughs> you might actually just kill Melio. So if your name is Lucian, that's yeah, Lucian or Melio. Yep, you're right. Exactly. Okay, Ruby. so Nocturne. Yeah, so unable to find any kind of gank opportunities, but. We do notice Khan is pushing with that Lucian, which is a very good sign. So we're going to be able to take the first hit. As I say that, Trundle is going to be seen by a ward in the bot lane. But both junglers paying a visit to the bot side here. Bit of poke down. 30 seconds out from those grubs. And if I'm Rubber Ducky, I would certainly like them uh, with the pushing power. Not even just in the lanes, but later on, the, it will bring towards a trundle. If Masho can grab that, the, you know, those extra grubbians, even if it's in the jungle, man, trundle split pushing with those grubs is such a problem to deal with. Yep, yep. Uh, Aatrox will also get to a point where he can kind of ignore Poppy and try to threaten his tower. We're seeing some more aggression spells being traded. Lucian going to initiate the first recall. It is not the cannon wave, so it's going to be an expensive if they do opt to, so that's why they cancel it. 
Ruffians have hit the rift along with those dragons. We're going for a bit of a cheese here, trying to find some damage. Oh, we're going to burn the ice flash. That's very valuable. Yep, flash yep. out. PTA on Heaven or Vegas as well gets chunked even lower than Revan does, giving some good autos down as well. Mid lane, we have both junglers showing up. Influence misses Scout of the Week. That's a big stun down here and took a good amount of damage, but nothing, no real summoners burned there either. The kill count remains zero. Yeah. Party Spirit's gonna look for the first bot lane recall. Uh, it may be expensive, but we've we've burned the Ash Flash, which means Nocturne's gonna tick six, and if we can find Ash away from her turret, we can absolutely get something done. Got a little hitting away at the grubs here. Got that push in the top lane, why not, right? Flame has that one pushed up, bot is getting pushed as well. Jet is actually pretty low. I assume from some sort of that poke harass, but yeah, like you mentioned, this is where the game is gonna get tough for Revan. Uh, if you're if you're Rubber Ducky Gaming, you want your bot lane to try and play as safe as possible. Maybe you sacrifice resources because an Ash without Flash against a Nocturne is a, a near death sentence. Yep. Tony Sports been on the map very long. We see uh, Rubber Ducky taking the getting the recall off in the bot lane, so they they bought and they're gonna have a tempo advantage. And we see Oriana heading back to base first. So there's a world where Trundle even comes down to the bot side after a clear and starts whacking away at that dragon because we've already got three grubs. So why not hit the dragon? Does have some camps coming up towards his bot side as well. We got some blue side pigs coming out towards that Drake, Drake as well. Uh, Senior Pavitaka will pick up the Rift Herald. So they will have a lot of vision on that dragon if they want to take it. But like you mentioned, their window to go for it was when the grubs were getting taken. So it's not a guaranteed trade now for Kong Esports. Yeah, we're gonna watch what Nocturne does here because this is gonna be really important for the upcoming sequence. He's kind of poking his nose in, see if he can get behind the ash. Oh, and he is. He's got a really good route. The ping's coming across. This is gonna be rough. Ash has no it. flash here. Doesn't even need to drop but paranoia it doesn't look yet. Like Lucian can close the distance. He was able to evade the gank. Yeah, Nocturne without six, there's not a tremendous amount of playmaking you have there. And Trundle has six now, so Drake's going over to Ruby Docker Gaming. I can already smell it. We're gonna be able to get that push in as well. Only problem, I, LL Cool Jace does have his own shove, and now we have the old, the old standoff going on. There's oh, the flash, there's no the shockwave first needed. And first blood will be picked up by LL Cool Jace. Influence stays over a bit too long. Bot side, we have a good Great. pillar drop down there. Lucero Pog with Taco had to flash out as that pillar pinned him against the wall. But still no kills, some extra gold in the pocket con gaming. It looks like L Cool Jace might look for more here as the first roam down. Nocturne does have the paranoia, but it doesn't look like they want to try and push their luck. LL Cool Jace finding the solo kill. No like there was a little bit of jungle interaction earlier, but that was matched, and so that's really awesome on him just to find that solo kill. It was all 1v1 advantages and really helping glue this map together because we are still getting pushed into the top lane and we are we were getting pushed in bot lane, right? Nocturne lost his flash to that pillar. Jed, not really ready for him or Vegas right there. Coaling hit by a lot of the minion wave has to cleanse the roof, but still has a lot of damage. Revan with the lethal sample free firing. Gnomes is taking a lot of damage. Defensive paranoia. It goes out mid lane. There's the ball delivery system. Influence is as good as dead. And Revan and company have to force a flash with the arrow, but no trade comes there. Influence is having a rough game of it. Proactive play coming out on both sides. Uh, Ruby Ducky Gaming really doing well in the bot side of the map. And on Esports did find a great uh, Nocturne Oriana ult onto Syndra. What is Syndra gonna do there without Flash? The Flash is burned in the 1v1, and that's just a free kill for Nocturne and Oriana just pressing R. Now we do get to see Masho at least leaning towards his bot side. I like it. Getting the plates down, get some plates down, some extra gold. And now with that push and the resets, that's gonna be a free Drake, so Influence certainly is struggling. There's some gold on this Oriana, but Rubber Ducky are doing a good job picking up as many neutrals as a response. Yep. This is shaping up to be a much closer game. A lot closer than our last one for sure here. Dragon getting taken. Top player is just in a slugfest. I mean, as long as the CS doesn't dip uh, for either one of them, it, it's not going one way or the other here. We do see finally Sir Revan getting a push in for the first time. We do have the Nocturne hovering, but the wave isn't in a good state to even really do much. 
I have a sneaking suspicion Poppy's going to be immortal this game because Syndra should not be spending her ultimate or a ton of her spells onto the Poppy. Um, so the other sources of damage are Ash, Trundle, and uh, Aatrox. And so a lot of armor coming in. As I say that, we're popping all these, we're fist fighting. Yeah, you sure we're immortal? Uh, that's World Under Pop. Flame looking for a flash angle potentially to get those sweet spots. Hits the second one. It get, forces a flash with a response oh, 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 oh. powered auto. Flame gets a solo kill in the top lane. Okay, both sides absolutely duking it out. Game two, both both sides took a coach's meeting very seriously. It is week one. We are we are setting the rift on fire. And look at this as well with that solo kill. What does it open up? Masho can take those Void Grubs. And the nightmare for Con Gaming has been realized. That is five. It looks like all six going over to the Trundle-led Con, or excuse me, Rubber Ducky side. That could spell big problems as this game evolves into the mid stage. Yep. Uh, Karma posturing really aggressive here. We're trying but that not going to amount to anything. But again, Ash and Karma just unlocked a huge win condition for them. Just push. You have access to Void Mites now. This tower will absolutely get pummeled whenever you guys are healthy and have enough information. But it's very dark on this side of the map. You see her using that Hawk Shot to try and scout the Nocturne because I'm only seeing Red Wards on the bot side of the map. We need to get that Sight Stone going. We need to get Karma putting some of those wards out so that Trundle can provide cover so that we can get pushing because those Void Mites will tear that turret apart. Does have Masho down here as well, and Senior Bog the Taco investing a lot of his time to trying to set up this gank. You can tell he's just itching to drop that paranoia and jump on top of this Ash, who does have Flash and Ghost available. And they are going to look for a mid lane play here. Great oh, catch, cool, easy combo. Yeah, good is dead. Root Scout of the Week into the damage. Here the Paranoia the coming out. Map. Where did Karma just go? Deleted off the face. <laughs> Revan has to flash, use the arrow defensively, but it might not save him. Still gets under the turret. Oh. The Q goes wide, and Revan limps out. And that right there, the Summoner goes saving the Ash. He was able to sidestep that Q. But what a positive play for, honestly, both teams again. This, this game is actually shaping out to be banger of the series yeah that's that was a shutdown the macho picked up on the l cool jace as well so the strundle has been farming a, a, along pretty well with senior pocket the taco now has that shutdown gold interestingly enough is still down in gold oh it's a 101 doctor what am i talking about <laughs> he's got some things going for him these next couple minutes are going to be crucial. This next dragon is going to be absolutely pivotal. We're starting to get a lot of buttons to push right now. Um, will one of the top laners take a visit over to the dragon? Because that's one of the uh, winning combinations in, in the competitive scene. All usage oh by Syndra to one HP. The shield, one more auto could have done it, but it's a flash out there from LL Cool J's. This mid lane matchup has now evened out as close as you can get with Rage Within Margin. Yeah, that, that was insane. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, really, to watch two mages blow their entire combo on each other, bring each other to one HP and just start auto attacking each other was, that was that was a sight to see. But influence is the one that doesn't blow flash. So this is now an Orianna who, you know, there isn't the biggest amount of instant dive threats from Rubber Ducky Gaming, but is somewhere list and is still a control yeah. mage, so. She needs to be careful where she walks on Syndra's next ulti timer. Exactly. And that timer will come up with that next Drake coming up. So that Syndra will have the flash advantage. Revan being left in the bottom lane here. Karma getting some serious roams out. I, I, I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of that because like you talked about, this bottom lane would have had a ton of turret pressure with the Void Mites. And we're seeing, I don't know if Karma was spotted topside, but Nocturne is absolutely posturing to die to this Ash. Do they know that she is as lonely as she is? Oh, now they don't knock him one there. Here we go. Yeah, we got the ring. Yep, no flash. This is a dead ash. The fear comes across. The shield's not enough. And now Heaven or Vegas is just dead as well. There's the dynamite from Jed's Lucian doubling up. Massive play coming up from Connie Sports, actually showing some life in game two. Uh, getting the ball rolling in their favor. This should translate to the dragon because the death timers are long enough. The tempo will not be back. Um most likely and we're going to see an immediate cross map trundle getting that rift herald we'll see what we can get done with that aatrox is able to get push so we'll see where we're going to use that arrow going straight into the fountain and just barely misses that lucian yeah i think it was trying to claim old cool jays because like you mentioned <laughs> that old timer was up for influence and uh if that thing sinks oriana 
she's dead. So. I think you're absolutely right. I don't think Ash was going for the cross map Lucian, but the mental edge that she would have obtained <laughs> if she had uh, hit that would have been maybe worth it. Mental supreme. But the bot lane, the bot lane dominance will translate to the dragon. Dragons tied up one to one. No, no clear winner of this early game so far. Both, both teams powering up. Yeah, but if you are Jed, this you get some pressure off your back, right? Because Ash, it's kind of fine. Even if you're behind, you're at least a, a, a old bot. You could set up your team, and you will scale once items come around. But Lucian, you talked on draft. You kind of need to get kills. You have to be a threat at this point in the game. And now Jed, Storm Razor completed, is going to be set up to be that threat that Con Esports drafted him to be. Yep. And Milio having the early game that shouldn't probably have been allowed. I, I estimated Karma Ash were going to be able to push them in for majority of the lane phase, but Nocturne did succeed in disrupting that. So Milio's already outscaled Karma. We're seeing action trying to push the jungler back. The slow lot of across. available. Top laner is also battling. Sir Raven is coming out and trying to in. his jungle. Yep, TP coming across. It seems like Rubber Duck here is just going to be able to get out of the jungle for free. All five members are up here. They're oh, going to the drop the Rip and initiate this. And they might just okay. try and pitch Sir Raven. Keeper's verdict. Not going to hit anybody. Oh, but Shelly. It hits Shelly, but the dive is still going to come across and one old unleashed power. So Raven is one HP. The flash is not enough, but it's, oh, it's influence. Dangerous. It has the turn aggro. And here's Jed to start spraying everybody down. Colin's going to whiff and they're going to leave heaven or Vegas just to try and get a back cross because there are bigger targets and fish to fry. Three big kills for Con Esports and make it a fourth. Jed is unstoppable. My god, with that Poppy all ejecting and buying as much time as it did, guys, we shouldn't be diving a Poppy. The tower, the idea was great, the Poppy alt was better. And Cody Sports collapse, save their top laner, doesn't let him die in vain, and gets four kills on the backside. This Lucian is out of control, our Nocturne is fed, our Orion is exactly where she needs to be, our Milio is outscaling. We are looking for a banger series here on week one. Ooh, hold on, is the Oriana where she's supposed to be? She's gonna have to try and get this back off, but Flame has her pinched, Flash is available. Revan's getting hunted down by Jed, he'll be safe though. And El Cool Jace expends the Flash, gets the speed up, and that actually will be enough to- Bit of a chase down here though, the Scars Bloom, bit of a misplay not hitting that away from Aatrox, but we get out anyways, we lick our wounds. Poppy will respond with some top lane tower pressure, perhaps. Oh, and we're exactly. gonna jockey control on the map, uh, prepping for this next dragon in two minutes. Two and a half, two K gold lead coming across. Thank you for the splinter check there, uh, Mr. PVS. Eighty is is near completed, so be a big point there. Arrow used just to kind of hold up Sir Raven from taking the turret. Raven wants to save it, and it will it will save it. Also, with that four mail that goes take blow. turn aggro, yeah, that is the lethal tempo free firing those extra volley of arrows. Sir Raven's dead, no summoners. Great play from Revan. And that's gotta be the most frustrating feeling in the world, getting cross, just getting cross map arrowed into the chase down. Karma speed up and they just, they, they just go faster than you. There's nothing you can do. And the Thormail made sure the turret also helped out there once the auto started landing from Revan. And Nocturne's looking eyes in the bot lane on influence. This is where Syndra is very vulnerable when she has oh the side lane away from the mid lane. Yep, Here comes the paranoia. The paranoia. Okay, yep, shock the wave. Shock wave. It is as easy as cake. There's the kill. El Cool Jace wasn't really ever in threat of death, getting slow, but that's another cross map play. We're still yep. training in this game. Yep, very good. I wonder if the paranoia is going to be up for the dragon timer. I imagine it will be slightly after spawn. So we're still looking for a massive fight around this third Drake. Three own five this Nocturne, the Profane Hydra completed a lot of itemization. And I'm curious, you know, obviously Drake is going to pull Rubber Ducky Gaming into fighting, but this Trundle is starting to build up here. They still have the Void Mites. When will they try to start leaning on this split push? The issue becomes that this Nocturne, right? You, there are only a cup. There's only like one or two champions you can really comfortably send to these side lanes to try and utilize the mites. Yep. 
And Con Gaming should absolutely put the pedal to the metal right now. We have two completed items onto Oriana and only one on Syndra. And then you look at the Lucian Ash item disparity as well, and it's massive. We we are ready to go. Um, do not give this dragon if you are Con Esports. Push the fight and try to get something done. Mtech Soul is the soul, not Ocean there. Another right bug coming across. The arrow is down and whiffs. That's a big engage tool for Rubber Dark Gaming out. They do get the stun. Here's Paranoia, but everyone's clumped up. Senior Paco Taco yep. can't really go in with that. And it's just a lot of blown ultimates to start out this Drake. Yep. I still think it favors them tremendously. They've got the wallets for it. So they're going to play maybe for mid prio into a dragon start. Aatrox holding a flank, kind of kind of threatening a little bit of movement there. And they're actually going to push off. Rubber Ducky Gaming just kind of asserting dominance with their movements. Yeah, and it, it, it's pushing Kadi Sports towards the mid lane where they should be able to take maybe two turrets here. They, yeah, they've got all five members clap, crashing onto this tier two. Question becomes, does Rubber Ducky want to go for this flank angle? Influence is here. The turret's not down just yet. And here's the fight. Sir Raven just shockwave on Syndra. Yep, calling out from LL Cool Jace as well. Big Keeper's Verdict sends some of the bottom lane as well away. And Macho is cut off. Flames World Ender isn't enough. Syndra falls on the background to LL Cool Jace. Two kills picked up. And now everyone is heading towards the Baron Pit. The wallets are just not close. And again, these poppy alts are game warping. Ejecting two members there, making the fight not even close. We're turning onto the Baron, and we've got the heals and shields to get us going. Oh, but here's where you talked about it. Could be a throw. Paranoia onto Flame. Doesn't have World Ender. Senior Pogba Taco gets the fear. They're going to burn down the Aatrox, who slips out for just a minute. Jen is dominating. The wallets are hurting. Good flash stun. Pins Revan into a wall and kills him off. The Baron not taking just yet, but more kills in the pockets of Khan Esports. There's just no escaping that amount of move speed, that amount of decisiveness. This this team comp that Khan have drafted for themselves is honestly, it's so it's so incredibly good. They have so many options, and now that they did get the ball rolling as they needed to, we're we're getting towards the uh, the hard parts of the game for Rubber Ducky Gaming. They should not have opted into that dragon fight as uh, down as they were. They should have done exactly what we were describing and used the Void Mites to their uh, advantage. They should have pushed top. That would have been a great uh, cross map option that they could have used. Yeah, I could have understood it if maybe it would have put them on soul point. But even then, Chemtech soul, not not the super most favorable soul uh, of the options that were available. Prowling dragon that hard is really scorning them and honestly could uh, could have just ended the game for them in the grand scheme of things with where we're at now. Yeah. yeah. The dragon was one thing. They kind of got away with murder there, but then to, to opt into fighting them mid after they lost the two turrets, um, was just unnecessary. It was it was a lot of ruthless aggression, and maybe they feel a lot of pressure in the game right now. So they said, "This is our moment." When I think we kind of should wait for Ash two item spike or or uh, Cinder two item spike. Austin for a top lane dive. This tower is yeah. one HP. Where are you going, Flame? <laughs> Flashing out, burning the ultimate, and he's got to play passive for the next couple. Yep, and they're just gonna keep pushing on top side, getting as many turrets as they want. This is where Rubber Ducky do have a little bit of an edge with Sieging is I feel like their range is a bit nicer so they can be able to stall but not if they get picked off here like this. Where is Revan positioned? He has to immediately flash away from this Nocturne who's way too fed. That Ash is as good as dead and Heaven or Vegas also having to flash out. This positioning time and time again is burning Rubber Ducky Gaming. When Nocturne has more items than your AD carry, it is a very sad day. They have the decisiveness, they own these jungle corridors, and Rubber Decker Gaming said, these are our jungle corridors. And now they're gonna make sure they're, the blue base is theirs. Now they're gonna keep that push up with the Baron minions. A lot of good poke though coming out from Influence and this Karma. There's a Shockwave, don't only hit only one. Not that dangerous, no. That's gonna slow things down a little bit. Oh. Well, it. Yeah, it slowed everything to a crawl. It stopped everything, didn't it? Uh, yes, yes it did. Well, uh, that is uh, that is unfortunate, folks. Um, the game the game was one sided again, but <laughs> I think this is the death sentence of the broadcast as we get the uh, freeze bug once more. The riot does not want us to see the ending, but we just have to forecast it with this Baron, with the preferential dragon fight, and with the lead and decisiveness that Con Esports have shown. We're thinking that game two is theirs. They've, they've earned it. They just have to put the nail in the coffin.
Yeah, so uh, uh, this has been uh, this has been your standard week one broadcast. Um, <laughs> that's what I'll say. Uh, the unfortunate reality is uh, we'll have to have some more discussions with our our team here in the admins uh, if we're going to continue the broadcast. But folks, uh, we, you know what? If you've been watching all this <laughs> stream long, you know what's going to happen here. Uh, I'll throw. I, I think I'll throw us to a break right now, uh, unless uh, actually, well, Jordbot. Do your best to paint me the picture of how this game's going to end, because I know you're pretty confident how who's going to win. So using that grandmaster mind of yours, <laughs> what, what are we missing that you think is going to happen? Uh, I was a typical use the rest of Baron to open up mid and hib into a dragon contest or f like if rubber ducky can't fight anymore, so they have to play base defense. So the question would be, is the lead too insurmountable um, that Connie Sports had made for themselves in game two? And I would say yes, the Lucian Milio combo at that point, um, Lucian alt calling is doing most of anyone that he sees uh, their health bar. And then that's excluding the Nocturne Oriana decisiveness that they had. So great comp, great execution, Great job. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna confidently say that Connie Sports can close this game out cleanly. Well, it's what we expected from the two ti expected titans of the Dark Star Division here. I'm gonna throw us to a break, and uh, we'll we'll see what we think about uh, potentially if there is a game three. Likely is gonna be a game three if we'll try and broadcast it. But uh, I don't want to put you guys through 20 minutes of a game that is just gonna get frozen again. So. We'll throw it to a break now, and we'll, we'll, we'll make some decisions on the other side. <laughs> Unfortunately, guys, try and stick with us once more.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, we do have an end conclusion this game. Con Esports come out with the win here as we get a look at the post-game stats. Uh, the first thing screams out to me, Jordan Bot. My God, Jed, that is a as if that is a 80 carry players dream scoreline right here. That's to Lucian Milio. They got it done. They did what they needed to. Nocturne Oriana as well. Got a great game. And then Poppy very uh, keeping things locked down on the weak side. This game did take longer, kind of like the last one than I expected. And if you're paying close attention to those icons, it does seem like uh, Rubber Duck Gaming did get a Baron Steel at some point. We don't know how it happened. Thanks, Riot. But uh, it happened, and it likely was the reason why the game went, what, about five minutes longer, Jordan Bot? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, we can only guess that uh, Rubber Ducky Gaming secured the Baron, maybe a Flash Smite, something, something, something. Uh, wave cleared for a while, tried to hold on, and then died to the next rotation of plays. Like I said, that Lucian Culling, I, it, it, does, it stings early game, and then it, it guns people down late game. Unfortunately, though, this is kind of where we're going to close up shop as uh, we don't find it fair that will go through a whole game, get maybe anywhere from 15 to 24 minutes into it, and then run into a freeze and kind of just not, you know, get that far and you guys don't get the ending. We, we build all this up and we don't get to see the ending. It's not fair to you guys, especially Jordan Bob, because we've had two games where we kind of have known what the result would be uh, when the freeze happened. What happens if we get to a game three and anything can happen and we get the freeze? Yeah, we don't we don't want to hype up a story that we can't tell the conclusion to. That wouldn't be fair to you guys. Uh, that wouldn't be fair to the teams involved. Unfortunately, it is what it is. We just have to we have to look forward to when this issue is going to be fixed and when we can get things rolling. Yes. Yeah, so for now, this is an unfortunate abrupt end to the broadcast. Big shout out though to uh, it was it was a pleasure getting to, for the first time Jordan Bach casting alongside you. We'll have many to come forward going forward, guys, because this is week one, so it's not a big deal. Uh, shout out to PVS as well. Honestly, all the people at Aegis, uh, uh, you know, Flay, Benjamins, all of the ADL admins, everyone helping try and just figure out what what Riot has given us as a product for spectating, and this is the result. There's a lot of Aegis games going on. I know AML is kicking off tomorrow, their season. You've got AEL as well the next day. The rest of the week is really packed with a bunch of Aegis products that hopefully, well, hopefully we'll have broadcasts. I, I can't promise anything, uh, but for now, that's the conclusion of ADL. We'll be back here next week, every Monday, starting off live at 8 p.m. Eastern. But for now, I've been Slayer. You guys take care.